Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India says T20 meet reinvigorated multilateralism, consensus reached on many issues. Former Pakistan women hockey player killed in Italian shipwreck. And Nepal's PM Dehel to seek vote of confidence after presidential election. And now for all the details, G20 Chair India said on Thursday foreign ministers from the bloc had arrived at a consensus on many issues after a meeting in New Delhi and had focused on what unites them after the Russia-Ukraine war dominated the discussions. Foreign ministers from the group of 20 nations arrived at a consensus on many issues after a meeting in New Delhi and focused on what unites them. G20 Chair India said on Thursday, even though the Russia-Ukraine war overshadowed the discussions. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said there were a large number of issues where there was agreement including multilateralism, food and energy security, climate change, global health and terrorism. He said, however, the G20 member states could not reconcile positions on Ukraine and there were divergences on issues related to the conflict. The outcome document of the meeting released by India stressed the importance of reliable food and fertilizer supply chains and of a resilient energy supply. Jay Shankar on Thursday also held a separate meeting with US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and reviewed bilateral ties. In his meeting with his Chinese counterpart Chen Gang, discussions mainly focused on addressing current challenges to bilateral ties, especially peace and tranquility in the border areas. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday held talks with his Italian counterpart, Giorgio Meloni, who is on her maiden visit of India. The two sides discussed ways to enhance cooperation in investment, startups, energy, defense, science and technology, and people to people linkages. Regional and global issues of mutual interest were also on the agenda of discussion. During a joint presser, Meloni said her country wants to strengthen its ties in different sectors with India. She also said she hoped India as the G20 president may facilitate the path towards peace in Ukraine. PM Modi also reaffirmed India's stance on Ukraine conflict and said the dispute can only be resolved through dialogue. Modi said both sides agree to further strengthen cooperation. He said India is moving shoulder to shoulder with Italy in fight against extremism and terrorism. India and Italy are celebrating 75 years of their diplomatic relations. However, the ties between both countries had turned sour in 2012 after the shooting of two fishermen by Italian Marines off the southern Indian coast. In another blow to the ties, India had also cancelled a $596 million helicopter deal with an Italian company after a bribery scandal which raised political temperature in both the countries. As Pakistanis reel under an unprecedented economic crisis, the country's former women's hockey player Shahida Raza was among those killed in a migrant shipwreck off the coast of Italy looking for a better future. Pakistan Hockey Federation on Twitter expressed condolences to Shahida's family. The 27-year-old also played soccer in domestic competitions. At least 67 people aboard the ship carrying illegal migrants to Europe lost their lives on the weekend. The vessel, which authorities believe was carrying up to 200 people, sank in rough seas before dawn on Sunday near a seaside resort. Those on board were mostly from Afghanistan, but also from Pakistan, Syria, Iran, Somalia, Italian authorities said. Moving on, people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have continued to bear the brunt of failed economic policies of Islamabad. A massive protest was recently staged by the jamaat e islami party against a soaring inflation, which has made life extremely difficult for the common public in the illegally occupied region. A massive protest was staged recently by the members of jamaat e islami party in Pakistan-administered Kashmir against the frequent price hike of all essentials, including food and fuel which has made life miserable for the common public. 
The situation has particularly hit the poor in the occupied region, with locals accusing the Pakistan government's inefficient policies for their plight. They say instead of any relief, Islamabad has only exploited them through economic depredations. Crisis hit Pakistan has this month substantially hiked fuel and electricity tariffs while it makes desperate efforts to meet conditions for an IMF bailout. Locals say Pakistan administered Kashmir, which is already marginalized, has borne the major brunt of unfair taxes, while there is no development in sight for the past many years. The acting first Deputy Prime Minister of Afghanistan for Economic Affairs, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, at a ceremony this week to mark the third anniversary of the Doha Agreement, criticized the United States and said that not only do they themselves not interact with the Taliban regime, but also do not allow other countries to do so. Baradar also lashed out over the freezing of Afghan assets by the U.S., saying that Washington has acted against its promises after its pullout from the country. The Doha agreement paved the way for the withdrawal of foreign forces from Afghanistan over assurances that Taliban will severe ties with other terror organizations. Afghan assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. With the meeting of the Nepal's House of Representatives getting postponed till March 19th, Prime Minister Pushkamal Dehel will now seek the vote of confidence after the presidential election on March 9th. Talking to local media, Parliament Secretariat spokesperson Ikram Giri said the meeting was postponed owing to different factors, which includes the election process of president and the vice president. Prime Minister Dehel currently needs a minority government after a rift with CPNUML and RPP, who withdrew their support to his coalition government. Dehel is bound to seek vote of confidence within 30 days as per Nepal's constitution. India's paramilitary force, CRPF, has introduced high-tech vehicles in order to combat cross-border terrorism in the Jammu and Kashmir territory. The move focuses towards the modernization of the security forces and safety of the troops taking part in anti-terror operations. India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force, CRPF, recently introduced critical situation response vehicles in its efforts to combat terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir territory bordering Pakistan. Equipped with bulletproof armor, the CSRB provides 180-degree protection to the personnel on board and allows them to get close to terrorist hideouts in an urban setting without getting the occupants exposed to enemy cover. The CSRB also has the capability of lifting the occupants up to a certain height and enhances the capabilities of the forces. So this is a very good thing to do here, especially in J&K, where we know that the terrorists are in the house. And we have done it effectively. The high-tech vehicle was also mobilized recently for an anti-terror operation in Pulwama district. India accuses Pakistan aids terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley, a charge Islamabad denies. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.